A guilty plea expected to be entered tomorrow in that gruesome kidnapping and murder of an Orthodox Jewish child in Brooklyn. Levy Aaron, the man accused of abducting and dismembering eight-year-old Libby Kletsky in a plea deal that could put him behind bars for decades. Here's Eyewitness News reporter Jen Maxfield. The kidnapping and murder of eight-year-old Libby Kletsky last summer sent shockwaves around the world. For Libby's family, the loss of their only son has been almost too much to bear. They're strong, tremendous faith in God, but uh, not, not easy. You know, someone is always missing at the table. On Thursday, Assemblyman Dove Hykend will be the family's voice in court, reading a statement from Nachman and Esther Kletsky about how the murder of their eight-year-old son has altered their lives in unimaginable ways. It really speaks about this family and about how grateful they are to God and how grateful they are to everyone for being there for them. Libby was kidnapped on July 11, 2011, after getting lost on the first day he'd been allowed to walk home alone from his day camp. He stopped to ask directions from Levy Aaron, also a member of Brooklyn's Orthodox Jewish community. But instead of helping him, Aaron is charged with luring Libby to his apartment and then drugging him, murdering him, and dismembering his body. The randomness and brutality of the crime inspired sympathy from around the globe. But Libby is my son, your son, and everyone's son. Everyone got it, the tragedy of what unfolded here during those days. The Kletsky parents approved the details of the plea deal, under which Aaron is expected to plead guilty to murder and will serve 40 years to life in prison. The plea avoids a trial that would have inevitably included gruesome images and testimony. The Kletsky family is said to be happy that at least there will be closure on the criminal aspect of this tragedy. And though the family will not be here in court physically tomorrow, they will be following the proceedings closely. In downtown Brooklyn, I'm Jen Maxfield, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. A new development tonight in the decades-old and ongoing search for Eitan Pates, the six-year-old boy who vanished on his way to school in Soho back in 1979. Police this afternoon raiding again the site of a former bodega where Pates was last seen and removing several bags of evidence. They are still building a case against Pedro Hart Hernandez, the man who confessed to the boy's kidnapping and murder. New York City is getting a new high-tech surveillance system, hoping to take anti-terror and crime-fighting initiatives to a whole new level. Mayor Bloomberg and Police Commissioner Ray Kelly unveiled the system developed with Microsoft today. It funnels images and data from surveillance cameras and sensors into one place where they can all be analyzed in real time. And police can call up cameras and rewind a crime scene from afar right after a crime is reported. New tonight, a burglary caught on camera in the East Village of Manhattan, and because of that, police hope someone will recognize the man caught on surveillance video burglarizing a home on East 11th Street. It happened on Monday. The man stole personal items from the home, then stuffed them into a multicolored knapsack. His face is clearly visible. And another crime, this one in the Bronx, a violent robbery in a parking lot. It, too, was caught on camera. Two men sneak up behind and then attack a 78-year-old man as he was loading up his car outside a store. The victim knocked to the ground, robbed and shaken up. Fortunately, he was not seriously hurt. It's been more than two years since New Jersey legalized medical marijuana, but so far no patients have gotten any legal pot. Tomorrow that changes. Somewhat. People with certain medical conditions can start registering for cards identifying them as medical marijuana patients. Those conditions include multiple sclerosis and terminal cancer. The card then can, then can, then can be used to buy pot at the state's first legal medical marijuana store, which doesn't open until next month. A big shakeup at the top tonight of the nation's largest but controversy-plagued breast cancer research foundation. The president of Susan G. Coleman, Liz Thompson, is resigning. The latest fallout from the organization's decision earlier this year to end funding for Planned Parenthood. That decision was later reversed after a public outcry. Also, Coleman founder Nancy Brinker will leave day-to-day -day management. 